We are going to be doing some vibe coding today, and this AI tool is absolutely mind-blowing that it can clone Netflix in like four minutes. And when I say that, you have to see the results. It's absolutely wild how good it is. And I will take you through what this tool is, how to use it, how to get access to it, and I'll show you some of the really cool features that it has, making it a really useful vibe coding tool. So let's kind of just jump straight to it. It's called emergent.sh. I'll have a link in the description below. When you go to sign up, it's going to ask for a code. The code is here. It's vibe with emergent and you just use that. You can sign up and get an account and start using it today. And just a quick reminder, if you enjoy AI videos, don't forget to click the subscribe button because it is completely free. So let's start off with our Netflix clone. So we can click it and you can see, let me just scroll all the way up for you. The prompt I started with is kind of terrible, but it's literally just clone Netflix website. <laughs> that is our prompt, not descriptive, nothing, just clone Netflix website. And you can see on the left, there's this little bot icon and it's coming up with a plan on how to accomplish this. So it's doing research. It's getting information about the website. And it says here, based off my research and understanding of the UI design, it has a plan to make a Netflix clone. So you can see the development plan and everything. So it says, does this plan sound good if you have to approve it? I said, yes, do it. So it's going to start implementing the plan that it set out. So again, our starting prompt was terrible. We're gonna kind of scroll down and you can see everything that it has done. So there is profile pages and search pages and movie pages, TV pages, a sign up, a watch page, and we can kind of see it go down all the way down to the bottom. And it says budget exhausted. And this is important. So all of these vibe coding tools tend to use up a lot of API tokens costing a lot of money. So what's really cool is you can actually set a budget for the task. So you can say, Hey, I don't want to go over this. This is how much I can afford. Make sure it stays within my budget. So I'm going to wake up the agent here and I'm going to preview it. And if you don't have it running like frequently, it will go to sleep as you can see, but we're just waking up our agent and we are going to test our Netflix clone. So here is our Netflix clone and it looks really, really sharp. So we have TV shows and you can see what's popular. We can see Netflix originals trending. There is a nice footer here. There is my list, which I don't think it did my list. I'm just going to refresh here for a sec. We have movies. So all the different movies, we have the homepage. So you can actually see what the homepage looks like with all the originals and you can see it scroll across. And again, this is one single prompt, which is absolutely wild that it was able to do all of this. There is manage profiles, so it looks very good. Uh, we can click different profiles, I guess, but it doesn't really work. None of this is really hooked up. We just told it to kind of clone the website and it came up with this. So pretty cool for a single prompt, especially considering we gave it a pretty strict budget. Something you might have noticed too along the top, so this is our cloned Netflix. We can actually hit this little tab as well and we can start something new. I wanna show you quickly what the community has made and I don't think the community is really showing off its true potential, but I just wanna show you. So there's like this research explorer, you can see different showcases, there's digital sidekicks, uh, different landing pages and hacks and play. So if we did like the meme generator, for example, it's just like you picking out a template and then you're just kind of adding text on top of the template somewhere here, right here, we can add our line of text. So I'm just going to like smash the keyboard and we can kind of go back up and you'll see it not the coolest. But again, what's really cool is this tab system. So we can flip back and forth between different projects that we are vibe coding with. So you can like vibe code multiple projects at once. So let's try one other project here. So we're going to try a project here. I want to create a pizza shop where when a user adds a topping, it visually displays on their pizza and updates their pizza. So there are some pretty cool features here. You can add images. So say we want to add a reference, we can attach a GitHub repository so we can like directly connect and work with GitHub. 
But where the really cool part is, is this little setting cog, and we can actually decide, do we want a full stack template? Do we just want a basic Python template? So do we want a Python application or are we looking for something more full stack? And I'm gonna keep it on full stack. And now we have a budget. So we can say, hey, I'm gonna budget three of our coins for it. And you can see I have four and we can hit go and let's see what it is able to come up with. So it says setting up the safe environment. This will take one to three minutes. While we're waiting for it to generate, I just wanna show you what the costs are. So we have the free tier, so you're gonna get five credits per month, which is decent enough. You can kind of do like one little landing page or whatever, but for $10 a month, which is beta pricing, you get 50 credits, new features and priority service during peak hours. And the ability to buy additional credits, they don't really say how much they cost. I need to build a pizza customization interface where users can see a pizza base, select different toppings, select toppings appear visual on the pizza, and it updates in real time. So they also have rollbacks, so you can roll back in time, but we're going to see what it is able to come up with. And you can kind of see it is using React, which is cool and it has a good understanding. We're kind of scrolling through. It gives us our plan. Here's the UI, the different approach. And it says, would you like us to use this plan? So yes, yes, I would just continue forward. So you can kind of see here how much we've used on this project out of the three that I have assigned it. So I said, hey, only use three of my credits or tokens and this is where we are at so far. So it's going to start implementing. And if we click any of these, we can actually see exactly what it's doing, how it's thinking about everything. It has a really cool process. If we click this pink button here, it actually shows you exactly what it's doing. So I'm gonna scroll up for a second. It's looking for the best images of plain pizza. So it's actually searching for it. It notices results of the pizza with toppings and it's just kind of looking through. It is doing all the searching and figuring out everything it needs. So since I'm not finding exact plain pizza base crust from a top down view on Unsplash, let me try searching the web for a suitable image. So it is looking through, it's gonna try searching on Pixel Bay. It is looking to, for the images to be able to make this work. So it is a pretty cool way of having everything function by searching and using different agents to create our application. Great, our pizza shop application is working as expected. Let me provide you a summary. So it gives us a little summary, but let's just actually see what it made. And yeah, this is terrible. The tomatoes is adding ugly looking pizzas on our pizzas. Uh, at least it's adding the order summary, right? So there's that. Let me show you what is really cool about this though. So that looks like absolute trash. The Netflix one worked extremely well. So hit and miss, but I wanna show you this. We can open VS Code. So there is a password here. So I can click copy and we can open a new tab and then it's going to ask for a password so we can copy the password in. Then you're going to get a page like this, which is literally VS Code. So we can actually see the front end and back end that it made for our applications, we have access to the entire code base that it just made. So despite our pizza example going south and being terrible, we can go and adjust all the code ourselves, or we can continue to vibe code back and forth. Also important to note that it only used 2.23 of the three credits that I told it to use for this application test. If you watch my older videos, you know that I have tried to create Angry Bird inspired games using different large language models. So let's try it on here. I want to have a menu screen, a level selector, and 10 levels. So it even creates its own little tests to make sure it works. So as we scroll down, you can see the images that it comes up with. So it says, hey, this is what our game looks like. But while it's testing, it's seeing what's happening. So based on the first test, I can see that the game is working partially. We have a main menu, but the bird cannot be slingshotted, which is a problem. So it is able to not only create the game, but it also self checks and self tests to make corrections along the way. So it's saying, hey, let's try another approach for collision detection and score functionality. And it is going through and it's like playing the levels. So after testing, 
it's identified both working features and issues that need to be addressed. And it says the main menu, level select, navigation, the slingshot mechanic, and here are some required issues that need attention and then some recommendations. I wanna show you one last thing. So we're just gonna scroll up randomly before it corrected. We're just gonna hit roll back and you can see we can erase all messages and generate a code or we can erase messages only and keep the code. So we can just say, hey, convert, revert back and our game has just gone back to that state of whatever we said. So now when we go to preview, we are seeing our Angry Bird game now for the first time using like probably a broken version. So there is no options. We can hit play game. We have our different levels, which we can't select them because we can only have the green one. And here's what our game looks like, but our slingy thing does not work obviously. So we'd have to prompt it back and forth to say, hey, fix this, make the game playable. Vibe coding continues to get more impressive each passing week with all these different tools that keep coming out. And if you wanna stay up to date with them, click the subscribe button. I think in this video here and this tool, the Netflix clone was absolutely mind blowing, super, super impressive. The pizza one, kind of disappointing. That was pretty terrible. And I think the Angry Birds is like somewhere in between. I did not try it after it made a bunch of corrections but I reverted it back just to show you what it could do. And it looks good. I imagine it did make the proper corrections. I'd have to go back and run it again, but I realized I also just ran out of credit. So there's that. If you enjoyed today's video, leave a like on the video, comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are, what's your favorite vibe coding application. And that's all I got. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Subscribe. You're meant to be